Hello, my name is John Ennis, curator and producer at Journeys in Design, and welcome once again to the Boat Shed, uh, aka my living room, for another cultural mooring as part of this maiden voyage for Salvage Scotland in 2020. This is a journey around the shorelines of Scotland, the extensive shorelines of Scotland, reflecting on coastal community, life in coastal communities, uh, in particular on, uh, on our ecological concerns there and in very intelligent, sustainable design uh, as we go. So it's my great pleasure today that we're docking in North Uist, uh, one of the Outer Hebrides of, of Scotland, off the West Coast, uh, to meet Andy McKinnon and Simon Hart. Hello, Andy and Simon. Hello. Uh, both of the Thai Korsova Museum and Arts Centre, a true ecological cultural hub in the Outer Hebrides. Uh, hello to you both, um, Andy. Uh, and, uh, and it's pouring down in Edinburgh today, but Andy, uh, just wanted to chat with you, first of all. You're in Loch Maddy. Uh, uh, I guess you might call it the capital of, of North Uist. Um, but could you, you've had an interesting journey yourself to, to, to North Uist. Uh, I know you were a filmmaker and, and came there um, on that and uh, fell in love with, with more than the island and have stayed. But can, it, it's quite a watery place, isn't it? Would you like to give us a wee lie of the land? Uh, of North Uist, perhaps with reference to the work uh, that you commissioned and, and produced with Chris Drury. Yes, indeed. Um, it, North Uist is uh, uh, well known for being more water than land. Uh, you can see this uh, on an incoming, incoming flight into the island or even if you just go up uh, a, a, small, a small hill you, you can see the amount of water in the landscape. Um, Chris Drury was an artist who we first uh, commissioned back at the very beginnings of Tai in 1997. Uh, and then he created, uh, along with a, a lot of local help, uh, a sea and sky chamber, a, a camera obscura work, which is still there to this date. Just, Wonderful. Uh, uh, near, near to uh, Loch Marie itself. Um, when we invited him to come back in 2010, he, he wanted to do a, a kind of transect across North Uist uh, to uh, do some kind of deep, deep research into uh, Gaelic place names uh, in the landscape. Um, and I suggested that the, the best way to do that would be the way that people had done for millennia previously uh, by boat and that portaging in between the locks which uh, which cover the whole line. So we, we did that over a, a fantastic two-day uh, portage canoe trip uh, across the islands. So you, you, you were originally not from North Uist but you ended up and you, you've obviously embedded and uh, got to know the lie of the land. Originally from Glasgow? Yeah, born and brought up in, in Glasgow. Yep. Um, and filmmaking was your first pursuit? Well, I actually studied architecture at Glasgow School of Art okay. uh, for too many years um, before discovering my real passion for film and photography. Um, and uh, I was based in, in Glasgow making, making films uh, and, and was in the late 90s was working on a, a documentary feature project called Transition which was looking at changing landscapes across Scotland, uh, starting with the death of Ravens Craig and a uh, change from heavy industry to service uh, sector and yes. electronics, etc., and tourism. And uh, through that project came to uh, North US to uh, do some filming here and, and met with people at Tykersova um, and we, we got together and, and dreamed up a, a, another documentary film project, which I then in 2000 came up to, to make with the participation of over a hundred first time filmmakers from throughout Fantastic. the Hebrides. Yeah. And uh, yeah. So that really- Never, never escaped. And you never escaped. 
And so just to, to think about Gaelic place names, it's taken me a while, but Tai Kursova is, is uh, you have um, gratefully uh, acknowledged I can now pronounce it right. Thank you for your um, tutelage on that one. Strong Gaelic tradition, an amazing board of, of folk that support Tai Kursova. Uh, but you've also allowed some other newcomers in, uh, most recently Simon. So yeah. you're, you're, uh, you're not a... Uh, from North US originally, either. Tell us a little bit. Of <laughs> no, I, I think that that's yeah, that's fair to say. Um, I was born and bred in Edinburgh. Uh, trained in London as a classical singer. I've been an actor. Um, latterly, I've been the artistic director of uh, an arts organisation, uh, presenting puppetry, visual theatre, and animated film uh, across Beautiful. Scotland and internationally. So this was very much a, a change of. I suppose professional and uh, personal life development and balance. Um, it was an intriguing job. I think uh, you know Ty has has an incredible reputation both in Scotland and internationally. And even though I I don't work primarily in visual arts, I've always been aware of it as a real centre of the local community. But also with this very strong outward looking face and and creativity and productivity. So it's been that. great to move here. And you're literally, you're setting up yes. as we speak. You're yes, four weeks in. Island, uh, island uh, house there at the moment. Yes, and yes. Uh, it's sitting between Edinburgh and... and yeah, totally. Uh, we're living in uh, one of the traditional uh, crofts um, on Burnery, which is a small island uh, joined by Causeway to the north of uh, North Uist. So uh, it, it's, it's, it's a brilliant education. Um, and also to be living in this this traditional building as well. It's, it's just an incredible privilege. Fantastic. Now you mentioned a little bit of rebalancing in your personal life and I think we have been talking about how the lockdown is affecting people and, and how we're re-emerging into different ways of, of being and seeing maybe. And certainly uh, that notion of pace and priorities and reprioritizing has been a topical one for, for many folk. Uh, it strikes me that uh, those values you're talking about and actually the core values at Journeys in Design are very much shared with, with the core values at Tai uh, Kursova. We're thinking about community, we're thinking about um, well-being, of course, as a, a prime motivator, sustainability and ecological awareness and internationalism, uh, reaching out uh, from, from uh, our, our journeys in Scotland to to neighbouring um, uh, nations on a thematic level. Um, Andy, to, to cut to what uh, lockdown and re-emergence is meaning for you at, uh, at the gallery, um, you've been, like many cultural um, venues, looking at how you get your, your offering online, and you've already started thinking about that as well. Do you want to tell us a little bit about that? Yes, do. We had uh, been planning uh, the 360 degrees virtual tour of the building uh, uh, for the past year and uh, the, um, uh, the pandemic certainly uh, encouraged us to, to fast track that, that process and we now uh, have the, the, the virtual tour uh, online uh, through it via our website uh, and that uh, allows people to virtually visit uh, all the gallery spaces Wonderful. and uh, uh, allows us not only to present physical uh, exhibitions which are, are in the spaces but actually also to uh, virtually hang exhibitions within the spaces so really uh, our, our imagination is the only limit. Fantastic. So actually quite a, a, an exciting uh, development in, in uh, technological aspects of how, how we all show and, and exhibit. Um, now you're sitting in front of a wonderful backdrop. You've, you've mastered uh, Zoom technology enough to give you a, a great backdrop. And it's a very striking image. That's the building itself in which your, your, um, your uh, exhibitions and, and in which the museum and gallery sit. And then there's this very strong... I'm guessing, or uh, as we've discussed, an LED uh, line across that. Do you want to 
I'm being very conscious, as Simon has mentioned, of how important reaching out from North Uist is to the work that you do and that you commission and curate. Can you tell us a little bit about this extraordinary project that's, that's illustrated behind you? Yeah, this is the, the lines LED light installation that we commissioned with uh, two Finnish artists, Timo Aho and Pekka Nittiverta um, back in, in 2018. Um, it's tidally activated. When the tide rises, the, the lights come on. So uh, neat, neat tides, it's only on for um, uh, a short time, but at spring tides, uh, the, the lights are on for several hours at a time. And we really felt the need to highlight the, the serious issue that we have here at Tykersava, um, and that is that we cannot develop on the site anymore. Uh, over the years from when we started in 1997, uh, there has been a number of uh, uh, extension projects. Uh, the the centre has grown quite organically to, uh, to suit its, its needs um, and, and you know, it's growing uh, presence over, over time. But we can't do that anymore because of uh, local authorities' uh, planning restrictions due to future sea level rise and storm surge predictions. So, and so, so that, that really, it does highlight that. I mean, quite startling when you then discover this beautiful um, and, and simple and, and beautiful uh, uh, um, intervention in the landscape across the building is actually a scary, startling uh, reality check on rising sea levels. So a, tr a tremendously affecting work that is absolutely set in the environment. It has, it has been very, um, I mean, it, it, it went totally viral online. Um, and in fact, was included in Design Boon's uh, top 10 art installations worldwide in 2019. Well, and it led to, it led to uh, the artist Timo and Pekka uh, working with Google Earth on, a, on a, a project, basically projecting similar lines uh, depicting sea level rise uh, acro across the globe. Um, in a project called Coastline Paradox. Wonderful. I mean, I'm getting a slight tingle as, I, as you, you know, as you talk about that, because it's, it's really, it's such an extraordinary and, and real phenomenon that we have to grapple with, like yesterday, but, you know, th these are important ways of bringing it to people's attention in, in, in that, in the way that we're talking. Um, so this tidally active LED, it, it does bring me to the conversation I've had, and I know that you've worked with the same artist, David Cass, and he actually drew the comparison between North Uist and Venice, which, again, was a, a sort of startling and unexpected uh, comparison for me to hear. Do you want to talk a little bit about, uh, I will speak with, with David about the detail of his uh, proposed work in Venice, but there is a, there's a parallel. Yes, we were we were delighted to uh, to work with David Cass and, and, and exhibit his uh, uh, exhibition Horizon Rising here at the beginning of this year, and uh, we have developed an idea for a film collaboration that draws parallels between Venice and uh, and Uist, um, both as as low lying uh, islands. Uh, both will be affected and are affected by, by sea level rise. Um, and we're uh, obviously not, that doesn't just, doesn't just affect US and Venice, it affects uh, low lying islands across the globe. Um, and another project which uh, looks at uh, resilience uh, in, in island communities is, is one called uh, Message from Upernavik, which it came about after I found a, a message in a bottle on a, the west coast, a beach in the west coast here, back in 2006. And it took me uh, roughly uh, over, a, over a decade to actually track down the, 
the sender of the message, who is a, a hunter uh, and a fisherman and a electrician a, in a small town, a small island town of uh, the Pernivik, 400 miles north of the Arctic Circle on the west coast of Greenland. And was fortunate enough to make contact with him finally a couple of years ago and to actually travel there last year to wonderful to meet him and, and develop uh, a documentary film project uh, looking at Islanders resistant uh, resi results uh, start that again and uh, we're fortunate enough to be able to be uh, developing a documentary uh, film project looking at island resilience uh, in the face of the climate crisis and what a, a very poignant but hopeful place to say thank you very much for joining us uh, with Salvage Scotland. I, I very much hope that Simon uh, you settle in well and look forward to hearing how that goes and Andy we get thank a you. chance to collaborate perhaps on the ground rather than virtually uh, for Salvage 21. Thanks so much both of you for speaking to us and uh, look forward to seeing you properly on the ground soon. All the best for now. Cheers. Thank you. Thanks. Bye-bye.